Guys, guys, I'm sorry. I'm really, truly sorry. This is like the fourth time I've tried rewriting this script, and I'm just exhausted. You can probably hear how much enthusiasm is in my voice. Writing my reviews for the first Equestria Girls was alright. My Rainbow Rocks review might be my favorite video that I have made. Writing a review for this movie has been about as difficult as writing a review for Premium Rush, and that movie is like my mortal enemy at this point. I don't know if I'm going to get a review out for that one. The thing is, I wasn't expecting writing a review of Friendship Games was going to be so difficult. Why? Why this movie? What's so different about this movie that makes it so difficult to review? I think it might have to do with how the movie is structured. The first two movies had obvious villains, and were structured well enough that you could tell when certain things were going to happen. This made those movies a bit more predictable, but it worked out for their advantage in the long run. Friendship Games is like nothing I've seen before. I'm not saying that like I'm seeing the Grand Canyon the first time and it's like, whoa, I've never seen something like this before. It's more like the writers of this movie actively chose to go against the grain of a typical good plot structure. And yeah, like anything, that can work. If you do it right. No Country for Old Men is probably my favorite movie of all time, and you can't really say that it's a version of anything. For example, The Big Lebowski used certain elements, specifically how dialogue flowed from Pulp Fiction. So you could say something like The Big Lebowski is like if they made Pulp Fiction a comedy, and probably get beat up for comparing anything to Pulp Fiction. So going with that, you could say Equestria Girls was a generic prom queen movie, and Rainbow Rocks was a Battle of the Bands movie. And then here's Friendship Games. You can't really describe this movie because it doesn't resemble anything familiar. I mean, you can't explain what it's about to people anyway, since almost nothing happens for the first part of the movie, and the ending of the movie is just an ex machina. So how the hell is this review supposed to be written? And at this point, I'm just realizing that I've talked about other, much better movies more than I've talked about the movie I'm supposed to be reviewing. When I tried writing scripts for this review in the past, I couldn't figure out what part of the plot to focus on. There's what I'm going to call the surface plot, where there's this big academic and athletic game between Canterlot High School and the school newly introduced in this movie, Crystal Preparatory School. You see, Crystal Prep, as they call it, has a reputation of absolutely destroying Canterlot High in the Friendship Games. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a title! So the surface plot consists of everyone in Canterlot High trying to beat Crystal Prep in the Friendship Games. I'm not gonna lie, there's not much else to say about that. Except for the fact that nobody told the final contestants that there would be a goddamn motocross race at the end! Seriously, they made it a point to tell the audience that nobody knew what the final event would be, and nobody was allowed to see what they were building behind the school. They're still revamping the playing field in preparation. Anybody have any guesses what the events are going to be? They won't even let us see what they're doing to the field. You'd think they'd at least tell competitors what they're competing in. It could be anything. And since we don't know what the Friendship Games events are... Still, the Friendship Games are serious business. We don't want any surprises. We don't want any surprises. Any surprises. And they pointed this out multiple times. It wasn't just like, they're keeping the final event a secret. Might I add, the plausibility of hiding a goddamn motocross track behind the school without anyone getting curious enough to find out and tell everyone is about as believable as the entire Wizarding World being hidden from the general population in the Harry Potter books. Did they have these kids sign a waiver? I didn't see any around. I have a feeling this school should have been shut down a long time ago if this is the garbage that ends up happening around here. The entire student body was hypnotized and almost killed in the two previous movies and the school's all like, We didn't have any part of this. We just let new students enroll without any parents, paperwork, or government background checks. What if Canterlot High just let a registered sex offender enroll in the school disguised as a teenager? I'm telling you, that place is a pedophile's dream. Don't think I haven't seen what you sick freaks on Derpy Buru are doing. I'm sorry, I still can't go over the fact that there's a motocross race as the final event to these games. Don't these teenagers have parents that would be, I don't know, concerned about their children's health and safety? Don't you think some of them would have pulled their kids from the school after the first two movies? I know this is supposed to be a kid's fantasy movie, but you have to draw the realism line in the dirt at some point, right? <sighs> okay, now that I've gotten that out of my system, we can move on. To the subsurface plot. The name I gave it is kind of misleading since this plot is just as obvious as the surface plot. This plot involves the aforementioned Crystal Prep School having a second Twilight Sparkle belonging to this world who doesn't know about the Twilight Sparkle belonging to the other world, and how that Twilight brought some sort of magic to Canterlot High. The plot goes on to show that this new Twilight has created a device that can track and contain magic, and the design for it is definitely inspired by something. 
When I say contain magic, I mean it kind of steals magic from the Humane Six. As the climax gets closer, the device seems to be having trouble containing the magic, so it starts opening portals to Equestria, releasing vines from the Everfree Forest into the playing field. At the climax, the magic is released and transforms Twilight Sparkle into Midnight Sparkle, a super-powered villainous version of the Purple Princess we all know. This actually brings up a topic I've been considering for a while. Who are we supposed to be rooting for in this movie? There are two sides, Twilight's and the Humane Sixes. Imagine you're a six-year-old girl who is completely obsessed with My Little Pony. Your favorite pony is Twilight, simply because she's a princess and she's purple. And purple just happens to be your favorite color. Now imagine your parents just put this movie on for you to watch, and at the end you see your favorite character in the form of an evil demon. So now you're confused. Should you be rooting against Sunset Shimmer and her friends or against Twilight? Well, apparently it doesn't matter because everybody's a good guy. Everyone wins the friendship games. There was no villain. All the bad people are just good people deep inside. In all honesty, I was really hoping I wouldn't have to say that this is the worst Equestria Girls movie. Part of it was the music. If you haven't seen my Rainbow Rocks review, and if you haven't, go watch it, you'll know that I'm a huge sucker for music, and somehow this movie had better music than the one that was based around music. Just listen to it all. <laughs> Okay, maybe that's not the best way to showcase all of the music in a movie, but the point is, the music is just redeeming enough to make me not want to dislike the movie. But in the end, it's still a crappy TV movie made for little girls. So it all comes down to this. Would I recommend this movie? No. Well, unless you want to watch the ones after this, but to general fans of the show, or even the past two movies, I'd recommend you not watch this one. Trust me. I had to watch through it at least four times to make this review, and it just got more tedious each time. This is technically the end of the review, but I don't feel like it's a long enough video, so I'm just gonna nitpick some trivial stuff that I noticed throughout the movie. Like this line in the archery scene. You have to stop aiming at where the target is, and aim at where the target's gonna be. For real though, do you even Isaac Newton? Speed equals distance over time? Aren't you supposed to be at the top of your class or something? And then Rarity. Ugh. I hate Equestria Girl's Rarity. All she does is talk about clothes. This movie is no different. I think it actually gets worse in the next movie, but that's for another review. She is so one-dimensional that she's more one-dimensional than when people joke about Applejack being a background pony. And I really see why nobody likes her on 4chan. I'd brush her hair. That's kind of cute. Uh, okay, that's weird. Oh boy, this thread. I just created this as bait, and it's, it's... I don't think it went how I wanted it to go. This movie still has My Little Pony in the title, but I don't think having a single background pony take up 10 pixels for 20 frames really qualifies this movie as a pony movie. Roll that one clip from Brony's React. What the? Yeah, this doesn't have much to do with the friendship game, does it? Oh, ponies! <laughs> what? During the party scene, Pinkie Pie brought two guns to a school event and opened fire on the students in the gym. I didn't come up with this joke. The credit goes to Little Shy FIM. If you don't know who that is, go look him up. He does Cinema Sin style videos on each My Little Pony episode. He really inspired me to start Crystal Sins. Alright, I think I've covered everything that really matters about this movie. Plus, I just want to finally get this review on the internet. It's been a long time since I've made a cartoon review. Next one will probably be something different, but I have to find something obscure or something that other reviewers haven't covered before. I should also mention that I have a Twitter and Discord server. I realize that if I never mention either of those, then most people wouldn't know they existed. You can find links to both of those in the description. Also, I'm out of high school now, so I should have a bit more time to work on videos, so keep an eye out for those soon. Bye, everybody. I just added that at the end. This is the improv section. This is where the end of the video happens. I just gotta fill some time so an end card can go here. You can click on those videos or you can like subscribe to my channel. Those are pretty cr so, like everything. All those buttons. Click all those buttons. Those are pretty cool buttons. Aren't they? Aren't they just wanting you to click them? Just click them. Now, I'm not gonna nag you to do it. If you want to subscribe, go ahead. If you like this review, there's other reviews I do. I do Crystal Sins videos of Steven Universe episodes. Probably already knew that because all the people watching this are probably just people who come for those. Thanks everyone for watching. That's all. I, that's all I've got for you, ladies and gentlemen. I don't. I don't know how to end a video. This is just the end of the title card, right? Or the end card? End slate? End card? Uh.